heading off to work this morning from Reading Station. But despite the government reassuring passengers that rail fare increases won't match inflation rates, it's still a huge expense. Here, Akarnam used to commute from near Heathrow Airport into central London for work. But as the cost of living started to rise, the journey became too expensive. So to save money, she had to find a new job a bit closer to home. I was working in a really good company, but I left it. And uh, I didn't have a choice because I didn't find anything. I live near Heathrow, the smallest cargo jobs, and I'm an accountant by profession. So I didn't find anything for that suited my profession. So I had to just consider reading again. If I'm paying, let's say, um, 400 pounds or 300 pounds on trains every month, where will I pay my rent from? Where will I pay for the food from? So it's, it's a tricky situation. Rafi Kanu commutes to Newbury five days a week. He spends more than £2,000 a year on his season ticket, but he's finding the cost too much. Uh, we're already paying more electricity at home, we're already paying for, uh, more for grocery, and uh, now we're going to pay more for the tickets. So it's just, uh, and landlords now want to put rent up, and, um, and my salary didn't really increase, so um, it's, it's tough. Over the last 10 years, rail ticket prices have continued to rise. For example, an annual season ticket that allows you to travel without any restrictions between Reading and London in 2012 would have cost you £3,800. Now it's £5,000. Between Glasgow and Edinburgh, it's gone up from £3,380 a decade ago to £4,430. And commuters travelling between Manchester and Leeds were paying £2,388 for a season ticket, but it's now priced at £3,500 a year. And it's because of rising ticket prices that some are looking to Europe, where railways are nationalised and fares are more tightly controlled. If the government brought the railway into public ownership, it could save around a billion pounds a year. Right now, they're choosing to pay out dividends to shareholders. And by the way, many of our rail franchises are run by uh, state-owned rail companies that are owned by other countries in Europe. So that's kind of crazy. The government says it'll hold off increasing fares until next March to help struggling passengers. A small bit of comfort, perhaps, as the cost of living continues to rise. Catherine Nash, Five News.